Hello everyone and thank you for coming. My name is Douglas Dunstetter and I'm a faculty member at SUNY Downstate Health Sciences University in Brooklyn, New York, who conducted this research with my fellow colleague, Dr. Yosita Pessin, and students who are now fellow colleagues as well, uh, Sunabayan, Diana Heisler, and Oksana Ozechowski. Our topic is various ejection fraction measurements utilizing echocardiography simulation in an educational setting. And as someone who's been scanning for nearly 15 years and has trained and oversaw 50 plus sonographers, I've noticed that sonographers struggle more in echocardiography measurements than other specialties, as they are a little bit more precise, uh, especially ejection fraction, where a few millimeters can drastically affect the measurement. So we wanted to identify which ejection fraction methods are most reliable with the least amount of variability for novice sonographers uh, compared to those that require a higher degree of experience to accurately measure. The most commonly used ejection fraction measurements are 2D or two-dimensional and M-mode in the parasonal long axis view in addition to biplane Simpson's method which is acquired in the apical views and visual estimation. So we went about this project using a cardiac simulator called Heartworks and cardiac simulation is a learning tool that has gained wide acceptance in training programs, which provide the opportunity to acquire scanning experience by demonstrating realistic views of the heart. And HeartWorks in particular encompasses 15 different pathologies to help train and provide exposure to novice sonographers so that they feel a little bit more confident when having to actually acquire images and ejection fractions on a live patient. So how did we actually go about doing this? For our materials and methods, we had three student sonographers and I, who was deemed the experienced sonographer, measure the left ventricular ejection fraction on HeartWorks 15 different pathologies using the aforementioned methods, so 2D measurements, M-mode, Simpsons, and visual estimation. Afterward, we analyze the inter-rater reliability of the three student sonographers and also compare them to the experienced sonographer. So let's take a look at our results. We wound up performing an ANOVA, which demonstrated significant differences between ejection fraction measurements between the methods. However, as you know, an ANOVA doesn't tell you where the difference lies. So we performed post hoc testing and identified a significant difference between the visual estimation and M-mode method. Now, bringing your attention to the scatter plot, each color represents a different person, where the black dot is myself or the experienced sonographer. And as you can see, there is greater spread among the dots on the visual ejection fraction. Now this scatter plot shows the ejection fractions measured using the Simpsons method in the four chamber view. And as you can see here, all the different colored dots, they're fairly close to one another. And so there was not a significant difference using this method. Now these next two slides are looking at 2D measurements. Uh, they're significant and personally what I feel to be the most useful, particularly this slide. So the significant difference was demonstrated between the three student sonographers and the experienced sonographer when utilizing the 2D method to obtain both left ventricular and diastolic measurements and end systolic measurements. Now, as a reminder, the experienced sonographer is the black dot. So notice how the experienced sonographer is consistently acquiring a wider dimension for the left ventricular and diastolic measurement. So what this proves, which is also something that I have noticed throughout my years of training sonographers and students, is that they usually have some difficulty obtaining the widest dimension of the LV. In other words, being on axis. Uh, for example, they may acquire images with too much papillary muscle in them, or it's just foreshortened in that plane. So I found this very interesting. So this slide is demonstrating the end systolic 2D measurements. And again, notice how the experienced sonographer measurement was significantly larger across all 15 pathologies. So after reviewing the images, 
what I've noticed is that the students were actually measuring uh, the or ending the left ventricular measurement at the papillary muscle instead of including it, which would lead to a larger posterior or inferior lateral wall segment. And in turn, result in a larger ejection fraction as noticed by this scatter plot here. Uh, though the ejection fraction measurement was not statistically significant, it was visually significant because if you see the ejection fraction is lower for the experienced sonographer due to those erroneous measurements. So after analyzing the data, I went through all the student images and measurements and noticed that the most common errors for under measurement were either from uh, cardiac cycle error, being off axis, or erroneously placing the caliber. So on the left here, we have an experienced sonographer. On the right, an example of a student sonographer. And notice how on the right side of the image, there's papillary muscle. So they are not fully opening the LV. And that's evident and it's exacerbated in, in systole. So there was issues in that department. In terms of the cardiac cycle, they were also not measuring the widest dimension. They were either before or after the QRS. And this is something that I notice in sonography students. It's that as soon as they see an image they perceive to be good, they freeze the image. When they're scared, they're going to get another image. And sometimes they do not look at the, the cardiac cycle. Uh, for the off-axis measurements, again, something that the study confirms, I see, I see students struggle trying to get the perfect on-axis image and the LV open. So it was great to see that this study confirming my observation. And as mentioned before, the erroneous caliber measurements result from uh, having difficulty delineating certain anatomical structures, particularly including or not in, excluding the papillary muscle when they're supposed to. So what is the takeaway? Students frequently underestimate 2D cardiac measurements and that cardiac simulation was useful in identifying these errors, uh, which were the aforementioned points such as the cardiac cycle error, an off-axis image, and erroneous caliber placement. So moving forward, what this study helps do is it informs educators such as myself uh, to think about how we can use this information to know which areas to focus on during the educational process. And that is all. I would like to thank you all for watching and your interest. If you have any questions about the study or would like to collaborate for future research in such areas, please feel free to contact me via my email here. It's douglas.dunstatter at downstate.edu. Thank you.